All right, once again, welcome to a series of conversations using uh, Zoom on national, using the National Renewable Energy Lab's PV Watts calculator, building an interactive learning experience. Uh, I'm Milton Geiger with the University of Wyoming Extension, for those of you from not in Wyoming. And this is the first of a, numerous conversations funded by a Western Sarah Professional Development Program grant. And uh, the next one will actually be on September 17th at the same time, and that one will talk about uh, putting our resources into the Creative Commons and what open source really means. So with that, as this is a conversation meant to be a very brief uh, overview of a topic, I want to encourage you to interact throughout. If you've got questions, uh, please unmute yourself, raise your hand, I'm happy to elaborate further. And the format for this is going to be a quick, maybe five to ten minute overview of PV Watts itself. And then we're going to move into a brief discussion on how we can best use it in extension programming. That is really the focus, bringing this tool into our extension programming. Okay, so with that, once again, want to thank uh, Western SAIR Professional Development Program. And this is part of the Exploring Energy and Efficiencies Alternative Curriculum. The E3A curricula has a solar electric module among about 12 other modules on different technologies. And this is really designed to enhance a way to teach the content that's provided in those modules. All right, so this is the National Renewable Energy Lab's PV Watts calculator. Many of you are going to be familiar with this. It is sort of the industry standard for a first glance at, hey, I'm interested in photovoltaics. What is this going to take on my home? They've really done an excellent job building an easy to use platform. We'll want to talk about some of the nuances of it and how you can bring it into your own discussions as well. So what is a uh, PV Watts stated goal? I'll actually read this back to you because it's very important to understand where NREL is coming from on this. So it estimates the energy production. That's very important and very useful as solar is a resource that we can estimate with a great degree of accuracy. Uh, if we we're talking about small wind, there'd be wide variation in site specific issues. When we're talking about photovoltaics, they'll say they can be accurate within three to 5% and they'll show you where that variation is gonna occur. So energy production and the cost of energy, we'll talk about that in nuance, gives you a very rough overview of the cost of energy of grid-connected photovoltaics. Remember, this is grid-connected. You can use it in other programming efforts with extensions. Say you want to look at solar-powered livestock watering or something like that. It's useful, but this is meant to be grid-connected. And it's designed for the ultimate user, homeowners, small building owners, installers, manufacturers, to easily, and that's the emphasis there, easily develop estimates of the performance of potential PV installations. If you really want to nerd out on photovoltaics and the resource, there's many much more complex, maybe slightly more accurate tools, but this is a great place to start. And how we're going to expose you to PV watts and what it can do is we're going to do a brief tutorial. So we're going to build a residential system, and I actually picked something pretty benign. It's the University of Wyoming College of Ag and Natural Resources building. And if you want to find this tool, by the way, it is also under the resources tab of our wyomingrenewables.org website through UW Extension. You can find it there. Or if you just Google PV Watts, you're going to get it every time. Okay, now let's see if I can properly switch here. All right, there we go. Jeremiah, nod if you see the PV Watts screen now. Okay, so very easy. It even labels get started. But what have we got going on on this page? First, NREL has a lot of other solar tools that are varying in complexity, so you can get into a lot of finances, you can delve into the solar data, it's all there. The SAM model, that's if you wanted to get into a specific uh, project, but PV Watts is by far their most popular. It will give you a nice little interface, you can read what's new, uh, help, you can offer feedback, all the, all the standard applications, but here's where we really get going. If you're working in a, now think about this, in your extension programming, you're working in a community. All right, let's build a, let's honor folks with a community specific example of photovoltaics. And in here, I just simply type in the University of Wyoming's address. Right, give us a little bit more room. And away we go. That simple. So your first step is a solar resource data here. And you're gonna see it gives you different options where it can choose from. In this case, it's recommending Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, I actually, as I look down at the screen here, I'm like, I know Laramie has uh, data, so I'm going to select Laramie. There we go. Changes it that easy. It's not going to make a huge difference, but certain climates, especially if you're in the coast, 
uh, you know, the difference of 100 miles, cloud cover can really matter quite a bit. So once again, easy skeezy, here we go. And lo and behold, it brings us to the system info. And each of these very handily have information on what they're using. They try to make it so there's no black boxes. Very useful in an educational context. If people have questions, you don't have to know it right off the top of your head. You can bring into here and you just have to be able to explain what people are looking at. And once again, if we look at the different type of module types. If you had questions on this, you could go back to the E3A module and there's actually a discussion about the different module types and you'd have a little bit more information. But uh, describes, you know, the industry standard is what we'll stick, uh, stick with there, but, you know, different options as well. And you can do that for each of them. And you could at this point just say, I'm going to size a standard install, you know, four kilowatts is their default. But we want to be a little bit more specific. And here's a fun part. Everybody loves to play around with Google Earth. And in this case, we're looking at the University of Wyoming campus. And this is the lovely College of Agriculture. Oops, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. That's actually the College of Agriculture. I'd say, wow, they've got a lot of roof space. Now remember, for mock-up purposes, we're gonna do a residential install, but say we're looking at a building, and all right, let's, let's draw our own solar system. I know our solar array. I know we have a room on our roof. Let's put it right there. There's some corners, and wow, okay, that's what I've got. That simple, you've actually created an own, your own solar install. When it comes back based on the size being a 14.6 kilowatt, you're like, well, maybe I didn't want quite that much, so I'm going to just round it down to a 10 kW system. And then you could go through, and you know, generally things are fixed. You could do tracking if you wanted, but different options. But it gives you pretty good standard defaults. The system losses are industry standards. Till sets that at a typical roof pitch for a resident. I'm going to say we can do a little better than that to optimize production since we're putting on a flat roof. I'm going to change that to 40 degrees. I'm going to say, hey, we can point these true south. And if you can't remember which way is true south, that's a default. Well, you just click your little information button, and it'll tell you if I'm facing east. Uh, just a good reminder there so you don't go the wrong way. If you really want to nerd out, there's a lot of advanced parameters. Uh, folks in Wyoming and others, I'm happy to help you work through that. Then here's some of the catch-all that I'll talk about. This is a great opportunity for teaching. He's going to pick the system type, residential or commercial. Notice nonprofit isn't an option there. And the reason that matters is because residential and commercial impacts rate structure. So I'm going to pick residential, and it says my average rate, and it tells you where it pulls it from if you really want to get into that, is 10 cents a kilowatt hour. I'll say that's a reasonable ballpark, but we'll, we'll return to that. And then it's initial cost. It, it sticks with a default. Uh, the nationwide industry standard, they'll update this as we go. Nice thing about uh, being housed at NREL, it tells you where the prices are coming from. But I'm going to say at a system that size, 10 kilowatt, I bet you we can do a little better. And I've seen prices come in a little lower. So I'm going to say 310. But you'd be able to change that and you'd be able to adjust for your local, uh, local issues. And then I'm going to say, yes, this is a residential system that people can use a tax credit. It's not a very uh, sophisticated analysis. In fact, you can't add other incentives. Say you're working with a commercial entity, you couldn't put in a USDA grant or something like that. But just once again, standard. We'll talk about the economics in a moment. And there we have it. Go to results. And this is one of the great values. It'll tell you the annual production with a fair degree of accuracy. If you go into different tools, it will come out about that, 16,000 kilowatt hours per year. And it'll tell you by month. It'll tell you your average solar radiation. All great talking points when you want to talk about the resource, the quality of the resource, and how it varies. And also, there's teaching opportunities embedded in that. Somebody will look at this and be like, wow, May's really a good month. Why is May such a good month in Wyoming? Well, we get a lot of sun. The temperatures are a little lower. When the temperatures are lower, the production out of the panels is higher. So there's an opportunity well, you can state that concept, but here's a way to show it and demonstrate it. And you see like March going through the roof. What's going on there? Once again, you start getting a lot of sun with very cold temperatures. And this is sort of a quirk by Laramie. You can talk about that and see if that's what you're going to expect, but that's what the National Renewable Energy Lab models. And then it'll give you the value of that energy. And this is a good place to begin to start to make your ballpark guess if this is a good system for you. And down here, it'll even give you a summary. So this is what I've entered. And this will tell me my cost of electricity generated by the system. So I, we don't have to be economists to look at this and say, all right, I'm buying it for 10 cents. And the cost of the system with those incentives is still kicking it out at 11. 
Once again, that's your gateway to talk about the economic components of uh, photovoltaics. And you can play with the numbers. Okay, what would it have to cost me to get it so it's equal over a certain amount of time? And all this, by the way, if you want to wade into like where'd that number come from, the help up here, it'll tell you where everything came from and I'm happy to explain it as well. You can download stuff. If you click here, it'll find a local installer. Really what that does is enter your address and into Google and say solar installer. So it's nothing too fancy, but it is an add-on right now where they can take it to action. And you could also print the results and have a report. You could give comments if you were sitting there and doing this for individual. Hey, this was developed by Jeremiah Vardaman, you know, and here's where you can get further questions. So it's a, a great way to do that. But how can we teach further on this? Now let's go back to our Prezi. Okay. So we've got an overview of how it works. Everybody can nod, interrupt. Pretty simple, right? This is a pretty straightforward tool to use. But how can we get more value out of it in a teaching realm? Well, if you do want to go in depth, by the way, they do have some great videos. You can spend 40 minutes learning about this. This is the Open Energy Information um, Project, National Renewable Energy Lab. This will link out of the presentation that's saved. You can go learn more. So I, I do want to point that out. OK. Now, you could insert this in an E3A program. If you're doing a 15-minute overview of solar, you can definitely see how something like this is going to fit into it, right? If you just want to give a cursory overview, offer resource, offer economics. But we can take things a step further. So remember that utility rate we had, right? Where it was 10 cents a kilowatt hour. When we deal in the realm of renewable energy, we have to understand some specific aspects of, reno of electric rates. It does no good to offset the average electric rate. Folks that have interacted with me will know we'll talk about things like you've got a fixed charge that you pay no matter what. There's breakdown into energy charge and demand charge. There's also a discussion of tiered rate charges. So there's a lot of nuances there. So let's back out. So if you wanted to get into a little bit more detail, well, you could take PV watts and you could wet it with another tool. Here's the Open Energy Information Project. And you can look up your own utility rates. You could call your local utilities. You could go to your local public service commission. But this is a good place to get an overview. So US Electric Utility Company's rates, look up by zip code. And here it is, the utility rate database. And this is meant to be sort of a wiki tool so people can change it. It's really meant to be a resource. I know my zip code here, I'm gonna search. There's a lot of other fun tools in here, but this is just a way to look. And I know that this is residential. Once again, we're trying to get easily approachable tools where it can be a self-paced learning opportunity for your constituents or something that you can actually walk them through. I say, all right, rates today, it's gonna to give me a lot of information here. And I search, and I'm like, whoa, that looks awful, but what do I know? I know that it's residential, you know that utilities, for instance, in Wyoming and other states can be far more. You can have 40 plus rates for an individual utility. So you've got to make sure you have the right rate in there. So let's take this as a teaching tool further. You click on residential. All right, it describes where it can be. Okay, this is all good information. And then I could use this to actually look at the charges. And here I see something unique. What this is telling me in a rather coarse way is I have a tiered rate charge. Well, now this is very interesting. The first 500 kilowatt hours that we use on Rocky Mountain Power, which is the utility there, if you add those up, that's really cheap. That's like two cents a kilowatt hour. But the next 500 that I use are much more expensive. That's 11 or 12 cents a kilowatt hour. Now remember, NREL and uh, PV Watts put in that average rate of 10 cents, and they're taking an average home that uses about 850 kilowatt hours a month. Well, guess what? What if the person that's approaching you is really thrifty with their electricity. They live in a small house and they wanted to do efficiency first, like we preach. Well, PV Watts just gave them a very, very incorrect result. So this is your opportunity to bring a teaching tool into this. And if you want to look at this further, by the way, we go back to the basic information like, well, this is really confusing. I, I didn't come here to learn about rate structures. Well, you can get to this information. And you just click there and it breaks it down. Here's your energy charge, and remember, photovoltaics are offsetting energy, not demand, although in a residential case, you learn this by reading an open EI, 
it would offset demand just because it's a blended term. So you see that the base rate, actually this one up here, 2.1 cents a kilowatt hour for that first 500, and then it's 4.3 cents for the next 500, but then you have this demand charge that is based on a per kilowatt hour charge. So you could have the opportunity to say, all right, we see where your blended rate's gonna come from. And then if we go back to PV watts, we could say, well, that 10 cents a kilowatt hour may not be accurate. Say somebody's using less electricity. Now let's change that to that 5 cents a kilowatt hour, that blended rate. And voila, you've got a teaching opportunity. Same production, much, much more radically different economics. That energy value is much lower. You could compare them side by side. So here's a complex topic where you're explaining how much rate structure matters integrated with photovoltaics and you get a chance to actually model it and you could do it on the person's home, you could do it on an example building and you provide something tangible without wandering out into the field to look at a photovoltaic array. Okay, so I'm trying to stick to my timeline, that was about 10-15 minutes, so that's our wrap up, that's an overview of PV watts. Now the real question is, how can you bring that into your own programming where you talk about energy? What are the gaps, what else can you wed with this? What do you need to see PV watts be a useful tool in your extension programming? And with that, if you've got any comments, you can unmute, I see some other folks have joined us. And uh, where do you see PV watts being useful? What else would you need to integrate this into a discussion of photovoltaics? And I'm certainly all right with the crickets chirping. That's something you take with any conversation. I will just go with the fact that uh, the overview of PV watts is enough. The value you're going to get from this is it is long-term supported. So often extension we're plagued by, we create great decision tools, but the real problem with the decision tool is it's difficult to support an update. If we talk about photovoltaics in the long run, price structure continually changes. They change that for us. They're a great partner. So it is that using an existing resource and bringing it into our type of conversation. I want to certainly emphasize that. All right. 219. I promise 15 to 25 minutes. I'm right in that sweet spot there. Any last questions on PV Watts, on the Exploring Energy Efficiency and Alternatives curriculum, where you can get a hold of stuff or anything like that? I have a question for you. Certainly. This, the dollars that you have in here for your break even and all have to do with the initial installation. How about the maintenance cost on the Excellent question. It's almost like I planted a question like that. Okay, so let's go into that help button, right? So system types, initial cost, it's going to tell you where it comes from. So you can delve into stuff there, but let's actually go back to that screen. All right, average cost. Got to make sure I find it in here. But the, uh, the fact of the matter is, this will tell you in here that it takes two cents per DC watt of the installed capacity and average that, that on a year. So in this case, it's gonna be $20 per kilowatt that it says is an annual maintenance fee. We back that out, we put in a 10 kW system, it would be $200 a year worth of operation and maintenance. And a lot of what they're doing right there is banking on the fact that you're gonna have an inverter replacement. Uh, I'd have to look in here, but it does certainly. Um, uh, it is factored in there. That's a great question. I'm sort of embarrassed that I can't find it right now because that is one thing I looked at earlier. But um, it, yes, it is accounted for. And you can go through the module. Like I said, it is the fact that they break it down piece by piece, telling you where it came from and telling you where they're. Uh, uh, where their sources are. That's one of the reasons I'm comfortable to use this as opposed to other calculators because there is no black box. Very good question. If you're really curious on that, you can send me an email uh, after and I can send you the direct link. 
That's my email address, by the way, in the chat box. Other questions? All right. With that, please feel free to contact me if you've got any other uh, questions. We will continue this September 17th. We're going to talk about what is Creative Commons and what does it mean that the E3A curricula is going into the Creative Commons. We'll expose some of the new curricula we have, including PV, which will then at that point be fully in Creative Commons, have a Creative Commons license. We'll talk about some irrigation curricula and other things. So put it on your calendar if you'd like, September 17th at 2 p.m. We'll do another one of these brief overviews. We want to make sure we respect your time, but at the same time, just give you a little tidbit that you can incorporate into your programming. All right, with that, thank you so much, and don't hesitate to contact me if you've got